Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcar.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Welcome back, everybody, to another Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association adventure. This is the Summer Nights Cruise Jeep Nationals Trail Event, and El Carug was able to provide communications assistance to the uh, organization's coordinator because this trail is going to be in the backwoods of Kentucky. For those of you that live in Kentucky, you know how beautiful this state is and uh, we're going to be going on some trails that very few people go down. This is a Jeep event and uh, so you're going to be seeing a number of different Jeeps, uh, different folks who brought out their Jeeps for this uh, trail. It's not a hard trail, it's not meant to be something like Moab or something like that, but it's here in Kentucky in the fall, one of the most beautiful trails that can be, uh, can be um, traveled, I suppose you would say. And also because this is in the backwoods of Kentucky and Appalachia, there's not a lot of good cell service. And so if there were any problems with this trail event, uh, they wouldn't be able to communicate with their cell phones to uh, try to uh, get assistance or if there was an emergency, as well as just knowing where they are on the trail. So El Cara is going to deploy the emergency communications trailer, which we just saw just a moment ago. And here we see the Jeeps leaving General Burnside Island State Park to head south and uh, join the trail about at the Yamacra Bridge. And uh, you can look all this up on Google Maps if you're interested. So this is uh, all of the Jeeps leaving. We had one of our members set up and uh, record the footage here so we could see the Jeeps heading out on the trail. And uh, uh, W4PBW uh, shot this uh, dash cam video so we could get an idea of the number of Jeeps and then of course he relayed this to the emergency communications trailer and the rest of us out at different stations would be able to know how many Jeeps, the color of the Jeeps, the lead Jeeps, all of that good stuff. So this really worked out nicely. Now this is station number one and as I mentioned it's at uh, Burnside Island and then we're going to have our second station at what is known as the Overlook and we had KK4 um, JPX station there and that's just about ready to come up now to leave at Burnside Island and make it to the overlook is about an hour and 20 minutes so they took a rest now this is an overlook of a valley in fall and so the Jeeps uh, took it easy stopped had a little bite to eat maybe took a small little potty break and then, then climbed back into the Jeeps but you can see how pretty this area is and uh, not a uh, uh, awesome view of the overlook, but uh, you'll just have to take my word for it. It is amazing. Station number three is the creek crossing. Here we have the uh, Jeeps coming across. Now you'll notice some uh, construction equipment here to the right. Uh, the bridge that normally goes across this trail had become so dilapidated that they wanted to make sure that they uh, built a new one. Well, in the meantime, uh, there's no bridge and the signs that are up are for road is closed but for Jeeps the road is not closed so they're just gonna ford this small little creek and again this is not a hard trail uh, but it did allow them to get a little bit of dust off their tires so we can see a few of those Jeeps going by here and uh, I set up my camera here I was at this particular station wanted to get some of the the audio as well and I would also report back to the emergency communications trailer set up in a different location um, the Jeeps if we had any problems where we're going to need somebody to winch them out, where there are going to be any delays. And so that's why we're there, not only to capture the footage for the event, but to also assist if they needed any help at all. Let's watch some of these, some of these Jeeps go across, and then I'll come back here in just a moment.
And I'll come back at this point in the video. You've seen a few of the Jeeps go across, and we'll continue that footage here uh, for just a few more moments. What was really great about this collaboration was the organizer was kind of worried that uh, on this back road, they we're not going to have good communications. And as I mentioned, this is where amateur radio can assist. If you're in a club and you're looking for things to do, uh, organizations to help out. Look for these kinds of other clubs and organizations that you can assist. Um, amateur radio is a great way to introduce other people to the hobby as well as to show the value and benefit of amateur radio in today's society. As much as we depend on these smartphones and cellular communication, it's great to have a backup. And in this case, uh, a primary communications method that will work in almost any situation. We were utilizing our two meter repeater and uh, relay our communications to the emergency communications trailer by way of the repeater. And at uh, this particular point, uh, the Jeeps had stopped, and so we had, a, had them in, uh, kind of spread out here, but they're just about to take back over. And then I was relaying this information to the emergency communications trailer so that the next station would know there was going to be a delay. So emergency communications comes in a lot of different forms. You can't always think about it as an Aries or a race or, or that kind of issue or situation. It may be something as simple as, hey, can one organization help out another organization? So look for that in your club. If your club is not doing these kinds of activities, why not? And you don't have to have an emergency communications trailer to do this. You could have just set up a uh, different stations at different points in the trail like we did and just not relay it to a central point of control, a, a headquarters if you will. Here's our last Jeep to ford the creek, a, a nice black gladiator with the American flags on the back uh, pulling, the, pulling up the rear, a little bit behind as well, but uh, this would be about the end of my station and I would go back up to my truck and then relay that everything was finished at this particular location and at the overlook he, uh, Ben had already done that as well. Now we move into what was called the difficult portion of the trail. Now I know in this picture it doesn't look like it, but look at these fall colors. And we actually probably missed the highlight of fall about three weeks, but it still is gorgeous out there. Uh, KY4 CKP shot some of this footage uh, on his uh, camera and on his dash cam. And it's just beautiful. And there were areas of this trail that Chris didn't get a chance to explore where it's a little bit tougher. Not overly hard but a little bit tougher and we also get a chance to see some of these jeeps and the different ways that their owners have added accessories the big tires and so forth and uh, for jeep owners this is what they live for not necessarily the hardest trail there's a lot of jeep owners that don't want to do a really hard trail but they like to do get out in the in the woods and uh, just do something simple and have a great time did I say it was nearly 80 degrees on this fall day? It was gorgeous. It was a little bit dry, but it was gorgeous. 80 degrees. These folks had a blast. And uh, once again, with the fall colors, it couldn't have been a better trail event. At, and this is an inaugural event, by the way, so this will be coming up next year as well. And I believe the organizer, Summer Nights Cruise, is also going to have a similar trail event, but for everybody else. This is just for Jeeps but I believe they'll have an event similar to this for other types of off-road vehicles that are not Jeeps. So uh, hopefully we'll get to help them out with that and we'll bring that footage to you as well. Just a gorgeous day, as you can tell. And like I said, uh, we all had a blast getting out there uh, at the remote stations. This is station number four. And uh, again, we have the uh, MCOM trailer out as well. And this is the last station picking up the Jeeps before they head back to Burnside Island, where uh, uh, W4PPW was still stationed. So we're about to wrap up the video. One more time, folks. If you're in a club or you're looking for a club to be involved in, get out there and get involved. And if your club's, if your club's not doing this, maybe suggest it. Um, if you don't have a club, um, maybe start one and look for activities like this where you can collaborate with others in your community. Again, it doesn't always have to be an emergency. All right, this could be a reason to get the uh, equipment out there, practice your emergency communications uh, procedures in a fun event where everybody has a great time and, uh, and uh, everything is not so rushed and under a lot of stress. 
I'm KY4BDP for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. I hope you enjoyed this video as a great example of how to get out there and utilize amateur radio in your community. It doesn't always have to be an emergency. 73s.